My name is Teresa Lockwood. I reside in Violet, New Jersey, and um, I want to clarify some things. I'm actually going to record uh, uh, false pastor Eddie Haiti. This is a cult who persecuted me. If I I basically want to focus on this one person. Uh, if I get this other woman in here, just want to let you know she was not there. She's just being deceived. So we're not going to make her like, um, um, I mean, I've been watching her for a while. I really don't think she has, um, I mean, um, I don't know. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna focus on that. I, I really don't think that she has any um, ill intention. Um, even if those, there's maybe a couple things that I disagree with. Maybe I, I agree with her actually more <laughs> than I do with the false opinions of this false pastor. Uh, he's he is manipulative. Um, I haven't de I haven't detected this uh, from her. Um, that she is deceitful, manipulative, or whatever. So, um, I'm not saying that's not the case, but I'm just saying I haven't detected it. I'm, I'm observing her. Um, so I, I just want to let you know I was seriously, um, abused, um, in this call of the Vine Nazarene Raymond Church. Um, they are stating some things in this video for deceptive reasons. Um, trying to act like they're, you know, okay, they're, okay. You know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get to this point. Look. So, he, I'm actually enjoying, for some reason, relatable in conversation. I'm, I'm not in conversation with them, but watching the video. Um, I have said that. I was just like, you know, I would like to have a conversation about this. <laughs> so, um, um, and some experiences. Now, the thing is, when he expresses Baptist Church as being like this, like, I guess, hyped up. Um, they, he, he described it as hellfire and brimstone. He said spit, and I'm not really sure. I, 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 I don't know if I, like, proceed. I was going to rewind it, but, um, anyway. The thing is, is the way he described it, I did not grow up that way. So, he, he was describing a Baptist church that I guess he went to. So, they're now in a John Wesleyan church. So, the thing is, is, John Wesley is, um, a false, uh, uh, he was not Christian, by the way. So, apparently online there is a letter, by the way, that he basically never believed in God. The thing is, I can't confirm, I, you know, I was gonna post it, even basically saying that, you know, this is, isn't confirmed or whatever. I can't confirm, like, the evidence of that. I have not read anything that would make it more concrete, than this person who basically said that John Wesley wrote a letter, um, denying that I ever believe in God. So, um, so I won't post it. I, I don't know if I have it. It passed years ago and, you know, didn't recall doing it. But, um, recently, like, you know, I, I mean, okay, I'm going to go on. I'm going to go on. So anyway, the Wesleyans, um, Wesleyans, um, they basically have been very, very, their teachings have been very destructive to nations, especially the U.S., Okay, um, very influential, and, um, um, it, it, it's, it's, it's really terrible, okay, and like every church, you know, they're, they're going to sit there and claim and quote the Bible and read from the Bible and claim they're believers or whatever, there's, a, there's very dangerous stuff, like, lingering among their, um, teachings that are false, so, anyway, this is a thing, so, he mentions and talks about, like, the end times. Like, he mentions these films. It's really, really terrible because... Um, let me just record it first. I'm going to record it, and then I'm going to talk about it. That's what I'm going to do. Because I always get to the point where I basically have this at the end of my video, and I try to explain things before. So, I'm going to, um... I also wanted to actually... I also want to talk about... I don't know if I can do two videos or what... This is a thing. I found it very interesting because there was something I just realized. Um, like I talked about before in like, you know, being obedient and all these other things and my experience with obedience, but it wasn't really centered around obedience, but it was in relation to parents and who to be obedient to. Okay. So it wasn't really revolved around obedient. 
Um, so, because the thing is, is that I basically was abandoned into these people's lives, and basically, um, shortly after, as an infant, short, I was estranged from them, um, mostly, um, I did attach to my dad, but he was nonchalant, non-communicative, you know, non, um, he was hardly around mainly because he basically had to work two jobs to support everybody. There was five siblings. So, um, anyway, um, the thing is, is that, so he, he makes it very questionable. Now, the thing is, I've been through these, um, um, discussions online and he mentions about his parent or whatever like you know getting a switch outside or whatever to whip him or whatever i do not believe in punishing my children with objects not based on um you know because you know the whole uh, it was based on basically that i was belted when i was around nine years old for being in the street the thing is is even though i had a discussion online about you know uh learn how to respect your parents or whatever because they'll get that switch and all these things or whatever yada yada so he basically yada yada, yada. He, so he basically kind of discusses that um so the thing is is that i want to record that but i also want to record this other thing um the thing is, I just realized listening to him from a different perspective, like, even though I knew, uh, heard the talk, like, almost all my life, not when I was a young child, but I'm probably, say, uh, uh, teenage years and up, um, there was always discussion about it, you know, hey, mom, get the belt, mom, get the, you know, the switch or whatever and all these other things. I never seen anything like that. So, um... The thing is, is that I've, um, the thing is, the only thing that I've actually experienced in regards to paddling or things like that was this church that was abusive to me. Um, Liberty Christian School, same as the churches, which is named Open Door Bible Church. They were the same place. Um, I went to the school and, uh, church and it was very often where they, they apparently, I didn't understand it at the time, so I put it, things together later. There was like a news crew that showed up one time um which i had no idea what that is was because like i didn't understand tv i mean um there was like i understood what a tv was but i didn't you know watch tv and things like that or whatever so i mean i just mentioned it like not too long ago where you know there was no tv but there you know my dad had like a little small tv in his room um um, and only basically watch Jerry Falwell, like, before church or something like that, uh, in the morning, and they only got a glimpse in it, because we weren't allowed in the parents' room, but, you know, children run in or whatever and things like that, and, you know, that's how it was. So, um, and, um, of course, when, you know, the parents weren't there, you know, we would go in there, you know, and build forts and things like that or whatever, and <laughs> things or whatever. So, it's interesting that they sit there and talk about obedience <laughs> or whatever. You know that thing? I'm listening to him, though, and I'm just sitting there, and I'm just like, now, I heard the word obedience a lot, like, growing up, right? And, of course, I remember when I was abandoned by this family, not, the dad, the dad did not know that I was abandoned, by the way. He was, he was told to go, up New, uh, we were in Georgia, he was told to go to New Jersey, find work, or what have you. Um, he did not know I was abandoned to New Jersey. Okay, and then in separate households from where he was, so he does not know I was there. I I basically found that out when I was in my twenties. So, um, he's I had no idea. So, um, the thing is, is that um, there was a lot of manipulation by the so-called mother behind everybody's back. Like I said, she didn't talk to anybody, but apparently she would say a few things or whatever to sit there and just get rid of me, basically me, my brother, and well, my dad, or whatever. My dad, or what have you. So, he wasn't a bad guy. He wasn't aggressive whatsoever. He was very, very, very calm, you know, introverted, but kind of kind of expressly, like, ambivert a little bit, like, friendly. Like, he would get out. I know my, my it was mainly my sister, or whatever I'm always sitting there because he was like I remember her sitting there saying because he would actually get out the gas station to make sure he shook the gas station hand the guy hand at the gas station or whatever it's like and my sister's like why does he always gotta shake everybody's hand for <laughs> hi brother and that's why he would introduce everybody as like all the time hi brother hi brother hi everybody was a brother 
Okay. So anyway, the thing is, is that, um, so this guy, he's, he's sitting there talking about obedience and fear. And the thing is, is that he's going to bring up these, these, these videos, um, that I basically seen myself. And it was actually after I was abandoned. I did not grow up in like the, the Baptist churches did not show these that I was in. But there's a really, really terrible scene or what have you where um, I was abandoned to these people. Um, I just want to let you know he's been um, convicted of pedophilia. Glenn Green, false minister. Um, the strange thing is, is I didn't know where I was. So I don't know where this... It wasn't a church building. It was actually a house. So it was like one of those... Uh, Victorian style homes that you basically see run down these days, um, um, a lot, and sometimes they're split in like you know in half, and they're basically three or four stories high, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, so the thing is, is that there it was a yellow, um, large looking house. And apparently it was the church of these people. Um, so I never experienced anything like that. You know, uh, we went, you know, to traditional churches with the steeple, you know, on top of the building and, you know, what, what not, or yada, yada, yada. So anyway, the thing is, is that, um, I just want to say this because it's really, really, really terrible. Um, when I was abandoned, I was abandoned, I, I basically was abandoned to my grandparents, which I basically, uh, did, spoke not too long ago, I'm actually, oh, going through the struggle, um, oh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna go past that, because I don't wanna get, you know, whatever, anyway, so, there was this, um, advance made towards me, or whatever, almost touching me, whatever, by the so-called grandfather, uh, of this family, um, the thing is, is they, they live in Jersey, we live in Georgia, they came and they got me under deception, by the way, I was being lied to, um, and told that, oh, I'm just gonna go up there and go to Disney World and then basically, um, um, go, um, and go with them, and they're going to come up and get me, or whatever, and, and they're going to find a place, and we're moving to New Jersey, or what have you, and things like that, I'm just going uh, ahead uh, of time, or whatever, and so, the thing is, is uh, we broke down, and away between Georgia and Jersey, and so, there was, um, um, you know, an attempt, um, by the grandfather, so, the thing is, I was sleeping, I wound up waking up, and kicking him, and pushing myself away from him, and, uh, so this whole thing about obedience, um, would you call that rebellion? I, I, no, I didn't know anything about obedience at that time. And, um, there was no concept of, like, obedience or whatever. So, um, and, and, and whatever. But the thing is, is I, somewhere along the line, I can't remember exactly when, I was basically abandoned to, uh, shortly after the Green family, Okay. And the thing is, there was this, okay, there was a thing where I was assaulted once by this guy. Um, I was not sexually abused or anything like that. The only experience that I had that, that attempted, that I didn't have no knowledge about, was by the grandfather, okay? So the thing is, I was with these people. Their house was very scary and very, very poor. It was very dark. That was basically more the uh, scary part, um... And, um, I remember they, I remember exactly what they were having that day for dinner. It was something I never had. It was like those steakums in a box, like, uh, sandwich steakums or whatever. They have like the, the wax paper in between, whichever. Well, they were having that on buttered bread, by the way. And, um, the thing is, is that it, it was strange food to me. I never seen anything like that. And the thing is, I don't know. I probably was trying to avoid basically eating it. I don't know. But, um, <laughs> the thing is, I asked to go to the bathroom. I went into the house, inside the house. And I didn't know. All the doors were closed and I didn't know, um, um, which one was the bathroom was, so I was standing in the hallway, and then this guy that I have never seen before, uh, or never, I mean, I mean, I, I don't know, I mean, I might have, when I was probably a baby or something, I don't remember, but I didn't know this person, uh, comes out, 
of the room and picks me up and uh, uh, off the floor basically holds me up against the wall yelling at me uh asking me what I was doing in the house it's like very very aggressively and angrily and my feet were off the floor like high off the floor held against the wall okay um so I was terrified I never had any uh never experienced any aggression uh before that in my entire life so the thing is is that um so, uh, the thing is, is, like, I had to stay outside, um, a lot, um, sometimes by myself and sometimes with their youngest daughter, who they basically use as a slave. I'm talking about eight, nine years old, seven, eight, nine years old, who basically was doing the laundry and the ha all the housework, basically, for their teenage, uh, sisters, um, and the adults and had to do, like, everything, the dishes, the everything. She was used literally for, basically, the servant of the house. So, the thing is, there was no evidence of any sexual abuse or whatever at that time. So, the thing is, we wound up going to this church, and they actually showed this. Uh, I'm going to record him um, talking about it, This, this, those those so-called revelation movies or what have you. About, I mean, I mentioned on another video before this about, you know, heads being chopped off and things like that. And, you know, they will show, like, in the, the video how the, the water was turned to blood and things like that. And, um, the thing is, in the movie, I just remember that it was kind of like a stamp, and it had, like, these blue dots, um, and it basically be like, you know, dot, 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 like, that would symbolize, like, 666, and some people would have it stamped on their forehead, or some people would have it stamped on their hand, or whatever, and, um, if you didn't get the stamp, you know, they, you know, they cut off their heads or what have you. The thing is, when I saw that movie, I was watching this movie, it was very dark, it was in this room, and they had a big projector, and the thing is, I didn't grow up, again, with any TV or anything like that, or whatever, so, this was, um, a very, um, strange thing altogether anyway, so, the thing is, is that, um, when I turned around, the this Glenn Green, who is now convicted a, pe a pedophile, uh, either in prison, died in prison, or is out. I don't really know, so I don't know the status of them. Um, the thing is, is that at the time I was around nine or ten. Okay, I think when I was abandoned to uh, New Jersey, so. Um, I went back to Georgia, and then I came back, so around 10, 11, so I think I was around 9 at that time, I'm thinking, so the thing is, is that, um, yeah, I was basically abandoned shortly after I was adopted, okay, so I was in there, in the, this family, um, since I, birth, I was adopted around 81, I was born in 1974, so, um, and they basically abandoned me, like, a you know, within, like, the year, like, right after that. So, um, I don't know. But anyway, but the thing is, so, uh, the thing is, I'm around nine years old. I'm abandoned to these, this family who's, their family is, like, they're, they're in, they're, they're, like, cults, right? So, he's a youth minister. The grandfather was a youth minister, okay? Um, and the thing is, is that, um... Um, see, I was said I was going to record them right at the beginning or whatever. But the thing is, they were watching this movie, and I remember turning around, and he's molesting this little girl. I didn't know who she was or whatever, probably around my age, seven, eight, or nine. And, um, the thing is with that, they they were teaching about obedience, Okay, they were teaching about obedience, and then they were talking about obedience if you don't obey, um, to follow the Lord and all these other things or whatever. And I was terrified of this movie. They didn't show literally a head like you know the the cutting off of a head, but it demonstrated. Um, and the thing is, is uh, there was like threats in this church or whatever. I was completely terrified. So. The thing is, is that, um, um, when I turned around, he was molesting this little girl, and he told me to mind my own business, okay? Um, the thing is, is, um, mind your business and turn around, is what he said. So, um, 
The thing is, I didn't know what to do. I just sit there, just terrified and crying. Okay, and um, I don't remember anything after that. No, okay, after that, I do remember not the movie or what have you, but I remember this guy, again, going on and on about obedience and obeying your parents and things like that. So, eventually, I don't know how long I stayed with these people, but eventually I was given back to the the grandparents of this family. It would be like the adopted mother's mother and father, I guess. And was given back to them. I stayed away from everybody. I stayed away from, you know, like the, the grandfather or what have you and things like that. And there was nothing I could explain to tell anything about anybody about anything. And I was hardly, like, um, I was hardly, um, um, verbal. Very introverted, very shy. And my shyness is separate from being terrified by these people, by the way. I know that for a fact. Um, because, I mean, I had to reflect back on it and, and think about when I did not know, like, all this, you know, terrifying things and horrible things and fear or whatever. And that was the same way around adults. And the thing is, is, um, the experience is, is that they were strange to me and it might have been connected so somewhat to communication and how adults interacted. I'm not talking about um, like violating or whatever or aggressively or abuse, but I would say, I have to say a lack of communication and connection between children and adults, which was a thing that, you know, children should not be seen. It should not, yeah, it should not be seen. Children should be seen and not heard, and I've heard that a lot. Um, go play, go this, and children always do everything separate from the adults, right? So, um, the thing is, it's just like, you know, it's kind of like kids, like, sat at, you know, their own kid's table at Thanksgiving dinner, um, which I did not believe in. Like, I never, I never connected, and this, I'm not talking about the abuse part, I'm talking about, like, standard, before I even encountered all that. It was just like, um, so I didn't, you know, I didn't perceive it as abuse or what have you, but I thought it was, you did not communicate with children at all, that's, that's just not what they did, Okay. So, I mean, they had Bible lessons and things like that or whatever. It's different sections in the Bible that they distorted, I find out later. You know, it's kind of like the, their false stories about Jonah, you know, um, uh, and, and, and this, and the so-called fish that they basically literally claim that Jonah was saw by a fish and things like that, which, so yes, I corrected. Um, so he wanted to insult it last time, by the way. So the thing is, is they're going to go on this, on this hell thing. Now, the thing, this is the thing. They go, the thing is, when people sit there and like, oh, well, I lived under a, um, a god of fear, under, you know, the, the teachings of, you know, hellfire and brimstone and all this other stuff, and you're always going to go to hell, what have you. And that was trying to be compared to me, by the way. But the thing is, the only one I say that to are people who are basically, well, very, very, very evil and child rapers, and those who are protecting them. Okay? So, um... The thing is, is that, um, the reality is, is this is a thing. Sin destroys humanity, okay? No, they don't teach it right in churches. Um, all my teachings that I have, by the way, are unique, uh, to the, all these churches. The churches do not teach the Bible correctly. Um, I basically give the reality to it, like, you know, sort of like there's, like, some people just like, oh, that's legalistic or whatever, claiming, um, you know, not to eat pork and all this other stuff or whatever, and it's just like, whatever, it's gonna clog your artery. I'm not saying this, like, other things I eat that I basically clog my artery, you know, like, I just had pizza last night. <laughs> so, um, so the thing is, it's basically a dietary issue. The thing is, if you, if you basically have heart problems and things like that, you go to a doctor, they're gonna sit there and tell you not to eat pork. That's going to be one of the things on the list not to eat, definitely. So, um, see, I did that to, to the end of this. I'm going to uh, record this real quick, quick, but, um, I'm going to have to do part two. I'm going to try to record him first and then give my, um, perspective on it. The other thing, they, th there's a lot of play on this whole fear-based or whatever. Oh, you're going to go to hell or whatever. Oh, that's fear tactics. Oh, that's whatever. No, um, yeah, no, evil people are going to hell. So, by the way, these people are playing these games, and they're and they're acting like they're playing, talking by their experiences. Now, the thing is, this is a thing. When I was basically in a church, uh, 
when I was in a church, a church open door Bible church, they spoke of hell and things like that or whatever, but it was different. Um, and they related it a lot. They condemned a lot of women speaking. That's what they did. Perverting the Bible. Um, women aren't, the, they didn't have to say rights. Don't sit there and say women are allowed to speak in church. Well, women are not allowed to instruct or teach a man and, you know, things like that or whatever. Well, I taught, taught Mr. Russell Poole on a good lesson. I didn't have to say anything to him. I kicked him in his face. Um, so these people are basically, after I basically taught these things last, um, uh, before, um, they're, they're just like, oh, respect your adults or whatever, uh, uh, claiming that, I'm sorry, if your daddy's trying to rape you, you can stab him to death. The thing is, in this pagan world, you're not going to basically get away with it because, well, we live in a pig pagan nation of America and basically with the false ideologies, uh, that's coming out of the churches, by the way. So, who basically uh, condemns women and children from speaking against abuse. Oh, and basically um, protects the pedophiles. So, whatever. I'm getting angry. I'm going to do another video. Um, so, I don't want this as long. Whatever, I'm going to end this. And I'm going to basically record him and put him basically um, in there. And I'm going to record him first. And then we'll explain some things. I'll probably repeat myself.